Welcome to the fourth video in our series on shock in children. The fourth and final form of shock seen in children is obstructive shock, which is when blood flow is physically obstructed, blocking the heart. This is the result of an obstruction of the great vessels of the heart and leads to impaired cardiac output. The proper management of obstructive shock revolves around the correction of cardiac output and tissue perfusion. There are four types of obstructive shock. These are cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, ductal dependent congenital heart lesions, and massive pulmonary embolism. Cardiac tamponade occurs when there is accumulation of fluid, blood, pus, or air in the pericardium. This is often the result of chest trauma, hypothyroidism, pericarditis, cardiac surgery, cancer, or myocardial rupture. Some signs and symptoms of cardiac tamponade include muffled or diminished heart sounds, pulseless paradoxis, which is a decrease of systolic pressure, distended neck veins, decreased venous return, impaired ventricular filling, and decreased cardiac output. To manage cardiac tamponade successfully, the key is to remove fluid from the pericardial sac and to properly administer fluids for the quick improvement of the child. The second type of obstructive shock is tension pneumothorax, which can be life-threatening and jeopardize cardiopulmonary functions. This happens when gas or air accumulates between the lungs and chest wall and may be caused by injured lung tissue tears or chest trauma. Signs and symptoms of tension pneumothorax include decreased or diminished breath sounds, distended neck veins, hyperresonance on the affected side, tracheal deviation from contralateral side, deterioration in perfusion, a quick change from tachycardia to bradycardia, chest pain, shortness of breath, low blood pressure, and cardiac arrest. Proper treatment of tension pneumothorax includes needle decompression and surgery for chest tube placement. The attending doctor should insert an 18 to 20 gauge over the needle catheter on the top of the child's third rib to successfully disseminate the trapped air. The third type of obstructive shock is ductal dependent congenital heart lesions. These are birth defects apparent within the first weeks of life and include ductal dependent for pulmonary blood flow and for systemic blood flow. The ductal lesions for pulmonary blood flow are seen without shock, but with cyanosis or a bluish discoloration in children. The left ventricular outflow tract obstructive lesion appears with shock within the first two weeks of life, which is the time when the patient ductus arteriosus closes. Signs of ductal dependent for systemic blood flow include congestive heart failure, preductal versus postductal differential blood pressure and differential cyanosis, absence of femoral pulses, decreased mental status, respiratory failure, pulmonary edema, and rapid progressive deterioration in systemic perfusion. To manage ductal dependent lesions in children, administer prostaglandin E1, which restores ductal patency by widening the blood vessels. Other treatment techniques include oxygenation support, inotropic agent administration to improve heart contractions, fluid administration to fix cardiac output, and correct metabolic imbalances. This was the section on shock of our Pediatric Advanced Life Support course. Please proceed to the next section of this course and review the corresponding videos.